Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first set of keynotes uh, inspired by um, Kirchbund in uh, Denmark in 2015. We also wanted to try that out. There are three themes uh, that fits with the anniversary thing. Uh, today, we're going to look back into the past. Our first speaker is Stola Oskar Johansson. Uh, who is one of the actual founders of Kiltbund. He's also a fantastic resource in the Oslo of LARP scene and uh, has made LARPs, uh, legendary LARPs, like 1942 and 1944. He's going to talk, uh, no, he's actually going to give us a sneak peek into the archives of Kiltbund. So, Stola. <laughs> Are we on? Yes. Okay, now a disclaimer first. Uh, ranting about the old days is usually something for Eirik, but this time I found some info he might like. Um, so, yeah, also I sort of, I'm not claiming to know everything about Knutpunkt. Uh, lots of people have been to more than I have, so, um, yeah. In 1997, I went to a conference in Anaheim, California. I was sent there by my workplace at the same time as Knutpunkt in Oslo. I came back for the cleaning up ceremony and for the after party. I noticed, I sort of, I have vague memories of some stains in costumes and lots of makeup. Um, at the time I was 26, and uh, I was, uh, had been doing some work before I went to this trip to sort of prepare this thing that it turned out to be with some other people. Uh, the names have varied over time. Uh, uh, like Beyond Dream was, I think, the first working title I found. Um, but this work actually happened most of the time in 1996, so let's go back in time and see what happened then. Culture-wise, we were listening to Spice Girls, Alanis Morissette, and Macarena. <laughs> Game-wise, the Nintendo 64 just came out, and the popular game at the time, one of them were uh, Lara Croft, that just came out. Uh, Computer-wise, this was all the rage, Windows <laughs> Modify. <laughs> And also Hotmail just arrived on the scene, but was still strange and no one used it. <laughs> at the time, I was a member of this group from Oslo called Raven. Other groups in Norway at the time, uh, to the left, not to the right here, like uh, Surya Moria from Trondheim and various other groups uh, were also on the scene. Uh, but my primary uh, organization was Raven, like a very sort of organized group with uh, lots of stuff uh, going on. It was quite formal. Uh, but what could we do when we made LARPs? We had nothing. I mean, like DVDs? No. MP3s? No. Cameras were all analog. They had film. This was the computer, if you had one. Uh, no USB sticks, no Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi. Come on. <laughs> there was no YouTube, no chatting programs. One had just started coming at the time. And no Wikipedia. And... No Google. <laughs> and if you had a cell phone, it looked like this. <laughs> so at the time, it was a bit, it felt a bit like sort of, yeah. Um, so things we did was sort of mostly about making paper. Um, we made compendiums, which was basically the same as uh, the signed documents. We made backgrounds, as we call them, which was basically the character descriptions. Uh, and, um, yeah, we had a fanzine at the time called the Budbringer. You see it's this strange stamp thing there, actually, actually sent in the mail at that time. <laughs> um, we had a mailbox in our group that people had to sort of go and check the, the mail every week at the meetings. Uh, and we made simulations, as we called the LARPs then. Uh, but this group was also organized. I mean, they, they, there was a lot of sort of effort to join this group because they had assets. They had a telephone. And there was even rumor about someone who knew someone who had a car. <laughs> this is still the same. <laughs> and there was a year in the field of a and sort of people were fighting to join the uh, organizing committee in this group because there was formal elections. We had something, something like an assembly called the thing, or the thing, which uh, sort of uh, was a big uh, issue, and sort of people were eager to find out who were 
going to be chosen as the leaders. Uh, contact with other groups. We had some contact with Swedes mostly uh, outside Norway, and we also did some traveling within Norway, but these were some of the groups at the time. Tene Biard was a big LARP, uh, had just uh, been held a few, um, few years before. Gjellene Jorten and Jørningen were groups um, uh, we sort of had contact with. Uh, yeah, but they were mostly about groups. Uh, people tended to organize themselves in, in diverse kinds of groups. Um, a little bit more than now, I think. Uh, and we were using what we had at the time, which was email and web. Actually, we had web even then. then. And we used discussion lists a, a lot. Um, these are some examples. Swedes had their own. I don't know what they're called. Uh, there was one in Finland and at least two in Norway. This was a, sort of like our version of Facebook chat at the time, only better. Um, and uh, we're now going to take a look at um, this thing here, which is the local list for our group. Uh, not everyone had email. Um, for instance, if you got an email to this list from uh, Jan Bråten, it was actually Hanna. If you got an email to this list uh, from someone called Ingebjørn Torgersen, it was Alan Edson Hansen. At least, judging from what they wrote, it was probably them. Uh, and um, yeah, it's cool things that happened on this list were often posted in our fanzine later. So we're now going to take a look into the archives of this list that I just found uh, in my sort of eternal mailbox. And this guy came and said, hello, here's the keyboard. You can now enter the deep vaults of Unix and see what you find. So I did. Uh, and what did we talk about on this list? Okay. There was a recent vampire-related murder in the US, and the uh, White Wolf Company sent some statements, a huge topic to discuss. Why we shouldn't use replica guns in public. <laughs> uh, how to handle journalists was also a very hot topic. And also how to spell LARP at the time, was it? <laughs> I think the Swedes actually settled for live with the J in August 96. Uh, also recruitment and lack of social skills among LARPers. <laughs> how to lower the death toll in LARPs and how to describe LARP to non-LARPers. Big issues. And also my favorite, is my dying bride a real goth or not? <laughs> and then you had also fighting. Like uh, many groups wanted to sort of get support from this sort of Raven group for some reason. And at the Interventure, famous LARP that just came after this, uh, were sort of fighting to sort of, should they be approved or not, I recognize as an official Raven LARP or not. Big issue. How to write a compendium. How to write a good character description. How to uh, run someone else's LARP was actually being discussed. Can we sort of shrink to wrap a LARP and then sort of make someone else run it? I, was, I didn't, didn't know that was discussed at the time. It was quite cool to see. How can we simulate sex and, and rape in LARPs? All classic, of course. Um, and also, like, making smaller non-medieval LARPs, like concept LARPs. We were starting to discuss these things. Making serious LARPs. What the hell is that? <laughs> uh, like, this actually meant as an example. Grand Padas from Cancer. It was held a few years later. And things like God sees 36 dramatic simulations, free LARP acting in workshops, and also even genuine thrones. I mean, uh, and the, some of the people who are really sort of progressive in this scene were Hanne and Alan. Uh, they were sort of uh, very um, uh, representative of those people who wanted to sort of push, push things further than the uh, traditional plot based LARPs. And some events now. Uh, June 13th. First email from Korpin Klani. Uh, August 8th, Alan starts making lists of other LARP groups. And he mentions the, uh, LARPs, the live seminar, as it's called, uh, a couple of days later. And then, Eirik Fatlan joins the scene. <laughs> September 4th, 96. And then Alan asks Raven for money for stamps. <laughs> And then, yeah, Alan leaves the list. He's off. Uh, and then he, uh, uh, then Hanne sends her first email and says hi, as a young Uh <laughs> And then uh, Alan tries to join the Korping Clown list. They say, are you sure? It's only in Finnish. <laughs> and he says, okay. Uh, so he sends an email to them and says hi. Um, and this email said, beyond dream, a brainstorm about live. A Nordic live convention is taking place in Oslo, Norway. January 10th to 12th. This is the first sign of Knutpunkt. And then Alan gets back on the list. 
And then we have various meetings, planning sessions at my place, at other places, and uh, the first time it's mentioned is October 29th. Uh, and then we have a meeting at the university on, uh, around Christmas because they have a phone. <laughs> and then in 97, we send this email to a lot of lists. This is a wall of text, but it basically says, uh, now it's happening, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's a huge email, and it contains lots of information. Uh, but Terry says, we couldn't really fix everything you wanted, but sort of just come and it's gonna be cool. <laughs> and they say people should sort of, uh, the um, delegations that these various groups send, they should have, have include various people like a drummer, herald, and an intellectual advisor. And then Alan says, my vision is to get going, get it going and make a skeleton. He doesn't want people to tell someone to shut up. He just wants everything to like sort of bubble up. And he doesn't want people to sort of, if someone says something in the back of an auditorium while someone is speaking, they should be allowed to do that because maybe they're gonna have this cool idea for the next super big LARP. And he wants unorthodox organizers combined in a good way with practical people, sort of, they weren't always the same people, uh, with a common goal to make two big LARPs, summer and winter in 99, 2000. Of course, big uh, Nordic co-ops. And Hamlet then says, uh, I want the synergy effect like one plus one plus one is 10. Very cool, and uh, many people with different thoughts and experiences, this will bring LARP to the Nord in the Nordics to a higher level. And we even had web pages. <laughs> and sign up forms. <laughs> <laughs> so people came, 19 from Bergen, 10 from Denmark, 12, 9, 15 people, at least 60 travelers. Various groups, uh and Clownies, Dokunitex, Apots, blah, blah, blah. Uh, different parts of Norway, uh, the independent groups around Oslo. Denmark, Semper Ardens, Aldrina, various groups. We have the, almost uh, some of them mentioned by name also. Um, so we now know a little bit more about actually what happened at this, uh, this event. From the program, three different kinds of knots. The blood knot, where everyone takes part. Special knots, parallel activities. Loose threads, like sort of whatever you want. Things just happened, they wanted that. Uh, yeah, and this is also from the program. The base discussions, a ritual workshop, already then, all classic, magic and LARP. But apparently at this time, the ritual workshop just sort of, yeah, it was okay. Nothing bad happened. Um, <laughs> and also things like male, female roles, dance class, B-rolling, battle, yeah. Uh, but also the an archive, as it's called, where people are supposed to sort of bring lots of paper that they have made, so you can copy each other's papers with a copying machine, <laughs> and take it home. Make your own compendium, take it home to your group. Because it, it's just, we want to sort of, uh, it seems that um, the point was to make the groups send delegations to Knutspunkt. That was sort of the, the thing. Uh, and then after, Alan wants to gather all this uh, all the stuff in the book. Uh, and we got reports after, written by, amongst others, Kurt Benklani and uh, Skalde from Sweden, yeah. Um, and people seem to have had a good time. Um, these people from Finland say that sort of maybe not make a big, huge organization for the Nordics. Instead, just have sort of small groups cooperating, not, not to make a huge uh, administrative thing. Um, and they sort of appreciate that they can learn from each other. And uh, this is from uh, Skaldet in Sweden, uh, also had a good time. Describes, among others, the legendary after party, which, in which people were sort of lying everywhere and sort of um, seems to have been a very yeah, good party. Um, let's see what he's writing here. He writes that uh, up the stairs we ran, playful as children. And then after, in February, they talked about writing a book. And then right after, at Vintremtir, a big uh, Nordic. Uh, cross Nordic uh, event takes place. Uh, and then February 26th, there's an email from Eirik where he wants to start a, a standard vocabulary for Nordic LARPs. <laughs> and then a bit later in April, there's the famous road trip uh, to Sweden uh, made by Hanna, Arlen, and Nils Wist, where they meet lots of people and everything starts happening after, after the first point, not before. Uh, and then in Sweden, uh, there were lots of more people in 98. Uh, there was the famous ritual gate. Uh, some skepticism. People write like, 
maybe we should have some nor some local things instead because English actually is sort of a little bit difficult to sort of use. Maybe we should sort of, and it's also very big to handle. Uh, there were some, not everyone was sort of equally excited. Um, and then Denmark in '99, that was actually my first real Knutepunkt in which I could sort of enjoy the whole thing. Um, parts of the program I found there. If, if you don't have it, I don't know if you have it. Um, at the time, I was promoting the first 1942 LARP, and we made this huge banner hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we went home, it was rolled up, and we took it to the airport and forgot it when we went on a plane. So the, the stewardess comes and says, you forgot your flag. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I encountered the phenomenon called, um, I had a pause for a few years because I sort of I encountered the non-LARPing spouse. And then I had to come back in 2005. This was after lots of things had happened. Uh, there was a huge debate on hotels or not, um, price-wise. The book really started happening. I was shocked because there was a lot of things going on. And then uh, things like free form and deep form came. I mean, <laughs> I was like sort of, you have LARP here and, and tabletop, and uh, never the twin shall meet. I mean, sort of, it was very sort of, strange to me. And then also meta things started coming. Uh, of course, this had happened before, but this was my experience as sort of uh, after my comeback. It was very cool. And then another intermission because I sort of, yeah, meh, uh, I felt this was really sort of my thing. It was sort of growing sort of, uh, uh, sort of a little bit outside my primary interest. So I had a pause for a few years, then I came back in 2013. And then really, what? wow, we have made a monster. Uh, <laughs> Facebook had arrived on the scene, which of course meant huge improvements in the way we interact and the way we can plan things and talk and, and the way we discuss things. Enormous improvement. Uh, lots more activism and politics on the scene, uh, much more international people coming, cool things happening with Belarus and Palestine. Summer school, immensely cool thing. The black box, oh, oh, and more meta techniques. And what do you do if you encounter these techniques and you sort of want to learn about, about them but you're not sure what to do? You make your own. <laughs> so, um, uh, to conclude this, this small journey, this is now a thing. It's like its own, its own being. It's a sort of, um, it's a creation. And um, who knows where it's going to go from here. But it's sort of uh, started to be, sort of really be a, a thing of its own. And we are now sort of, for instance, a lot better at sharing stuff than we used to be back then, uh, from what I see in the archives. Uh, and people have done all these things we wanted to do. I mean, like uh, making huge, enormous LARPs, uh, mixing LARP and art, all this cool stuff we dreamed that actually, actually happened. Uh, maybe so I, I, when I come to Knutepunkt these days, I sort of feel that it's less about LARP and a lot, a lot more other things, which is cool, but it's sort of, I don't always understand these things. But, uh, and also we have sort of uh, more national events these days. Um, so um, just keep it, keep it up, I'll just be here in the corner. Thank you. <laughs>